what we're going to do is normally we paint the whole background, but he's got some kind of different things going on here. So we're going to trace part of the image. And the only part we're going to trace, um, I need my um, canvas camera. The only part we're going to trace is um, this part right here, the square of the back, the blackboard. And then we're going to paint that in, we're going to paint the, the wall in around the background. And then um, after we do that, then we're going to go back and trace on top of the girls, take, trace the girls. Now, um, if you looked at your instructions, how many people look at their instructions? Raise your hand. Uh, nobody, right? <laughs> okay, so good. Okay, that's fine. So um, we typically don't paint the background first. I mean, we typically do paint the background first, but this time we're just going to move things around a little bit, okay? So you want to use your um, carbon paper and your tracing paper. So I'm going to show that to you. I'm going to take this off the screen. And you have an image that looks like this. Okay. Oh, I know what I was trying to tell you. Hair dryers. We don't need it right this second, but have someone go run and get your hair dryer because we're going to use it. Okay. Um, so you want the carbon paper down first. If you've never used carbon paper down before, the dull side is facing up. The shiny side goes down. Don't trace it with the shiny side up because you'll just be wasting your time. So you want to put the shiny side down and then you want to lay down your canvas. I mean, your tracer like this. Okay. So the best way to do this is with a ballpark point pen, Danny. And here's one right here. So I'm going to grab it and try not to fall out of my chair. Whoa. <laughs> All right. This happens to me every week. So don't. Don't uh, worry, we got it under control here. Okay, so I've got my ballpoint pen. And if you need a straight edge, that's fine. I'll wait for you. Um, but then you can also just take a little bit of time. So what we're gonna do is go across. You're just gonna kind of ignore the girl's dress there, or you can trace over it, kind of. And just go across like that, go all the way across your canvas. And then you're gonna go all the way up, okay? So we're just tracing these two lines so that we can do our background painting first. And then we'll go on top of this with uh, the rest of our color, okay? So um, I recommend that you hold the, your hand down. Make sure the shiny side is down. Is everybody in? How many people we got? 17. 17, okay. Well, maybe some people just want to paint later. It is Friday night. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and make my first line. And I'm going to go on this side and do the same thing. And I'm holding down my um, paper and carbon paper with my left hand, or if you're right handed, you do the opposite, or left handed. And then I'm just going to go across like this so I can make sure that um, I have a nice straight blackboard like that. And same here. And just try to line those lines up. It doesn't have to be perfect because our number 14 brush is going to help us do that. So if you don't get all the way to the top, don't worry about it. Um, we're just going to fill in that empty space with our number 14 brush. Okay, um, how's that looking? Because to me, it looks like my image is a little, let me move this out of the way. Oh, okay, I just want to straighten that out. Okay, that's better. That's better, okay. And I think I can hear everybody, right? You're not muted. So if you have a question, just unmute yourself and let me have it. All right. So first thing we're going to do is mix some colors, right? Um, but I'm going to show you about your brushes first. So everybody has a tube of brushes like this with that cute woman on the um, 
outside of it. Uh, so we're going to take those brushes out and then we're going to talk about them. So these are not your everyday paint and sip brushes. These are high quality student brushes. Um, you can use them over and over again. I'm going to show you how to take care of them so they'll last you at least for another six months or so. Um, you can go ahead and take off the plastic ends if you haven't done that already. And what's really cool about these brushes is they do multi-functions. So that's why we don't have like 14 brushes in front of us because these two brushes are going to do everything that we need to do. Okay, so the first thing, the first color that we're going to mix is um, uh, your thalo blue, which is this uh, blue color. And we're probably going to mix just a tiny bit of thalo green and we'll probably use just a tiny bit of white. Okay, so um, you also need your palette knife which came in your kit as well. And it's just that funny looking plastic tube that um, was also in your kit when you received it. Um, so we use the palette knife so that um, we don't contaminate the colors, okay? So we don't mix paint with our brushes because that ruins them. Um, we use a palette knife to get the paint out of the containers and put them onto our, um, our um, palette, or in your case, your tray, okay? So the first color we're going to put down is our white color. So I'm going to take my palette knife and I'm just going to scoop out like about that much. What's that, about half a teaspoon? If anybody bakes, <laughs> you know what that is. All right, so we're just going to mash that out like that. And then the next color we're going to put in is we're going to take a little phthalo blue. Now I'm going to wipe my palette knife off on the side so I don't contaminate my blue. And I'm just going to pick up about um, a quarter of a teaspoon of um, phthalo blue and I put it off to the side. Okay. And then the next color we're going to mix or that we're going to pick up is our phthalo green. And you just crack that bad boy open and we're just going to take a tiny little bit, like about that much, and put it down next to um, the other colors on the palette. Okay, so um, we're going for um, this kind of a slate blue. So um, before we do any of that, I want to demonstrate the brushes to you. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate it over here on my um, palette paper so you understand what you have in your hands. Now the first brush I'm going to demonstrate is your number 14 brush and it is a very nice brush. We're going to just wet it a little bit, tap off the excess water, and you can see how the water is slowly creeping up to, you can zoom in a little bit more, Danny, please, um, how it's slowly creeping into the bristles, um, but we still have a nice flat, um, straight edge on this brush. And this is gonna enable us to do a lot of cool things. So the first thing that you can do with a straight edge like that, let's pick up a little phthalo blue on both sides, and you can watch how this is done. We can make a straight line with this brush, and the way we do that, is not by putting a lot of pressure. We're not pressing down, we're just barely touching the surface of um, the uh, paper or canvas and we're just slowly moving. You know, I don't have glasses on, that's why I can't see. I'm like, why can't I see? <laughs> I'm gonna put my glasses on now. Now I can see, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so I'm just laying my brush down and I'm just lightly touching and I can make a straight line with this brush. See that? Or I can make a straight, like let's just say I'm trying to make a straight line. Look at that, I can just use the edge of the brush to make the straight line. So that's why we don't want to ruin the integrity of that straight edge. To keep it intact, we're lightly touching the canvas. And that's how we use the number 14 brush. Now, of course, the number 14 can do this. Okay, so, and then we wanna clean that off. You wanna clean your brush off in between um, using color. And we just do that by um, tapping it on the side of the can, moving it around in the water. Don't push down to the bottom because that just ruins your brush. Just frays the edges. 
So just tap it on the side, let the water rush through the brushes, and then tap off the excess water on your paper towel. Okay? So now we're gonna mix the first color. Um, let me, you know what, I'll go ahead and demo the other brush as well. Let me do that first, okay? So I'm gonna take our number 12 brush. So this is a really cool brush. Now, if it looks a little frazzled like this one does straight out of the container, I don't know why it is, but all you have to do is to dip it in your water and all of a sudden it goes back to um, kind of a pointed thing. If it's not pointed on the edge, you just want to lay it down on your paper towel and just turn it like this and you'll get a nice point on the end. Okay, so that point will help us when we have to zoom in on areas that are really tiny, okay? So if we could just zoom in a little bit so they can see how pointed that brush is after I wet it. And then can we make sure there's no pe people waiting in the waiting room? Okay, we're good, okay. Good. So this is, can you see that point on the edge of my brush? So now I can go over to my um, paint and pick up just a little bit of paint on the edge of the brush and look at the super fine line with this brush. Super fine. Super fine. And then I can also get a wider stroke. If I just put a tiny bit of pressure, it gets wider. Put down even more pressure and it gets even wider. And then, yeah. So if I had more paint in my brush, I could get a much wider stroke. So I just wanted to show you what your brushes are capable of doing. Um, you can go ahead and just um, tap your brush inside of your water container on the side. Don't push it down on the bottom of the container because it'll just ruin your brush. You don't want to do that. So, and then just lay that down on your paper towel and look, it's ready to go for the next time we need to use it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and mix some color. So I'm going to take a little bit of white, pull it off to the side, and I'm going to take a little bit of phthalo blue like about that much and mix it into the white. And then I'm going to take a little bit more. Now that's the trick about mixing color. So you use the less dominant color white, you start there. And then you add the more um, uh, saturated color, the blue, to that white. Okay, just a little bit at a time because it's Always easier to add more color and impossible to take it away. Uh, you wind up just wasting paint if you um, if you put like 50-50 mix. You want to just add a little bit at a time. And then I'm going to take a little bit of my phthalo green and add that in just a tiny bit. In fact, I'm going to put it off to the side first so that I don't put too much. I just want it to be a unique kind of green. It turns out I need a little bit more, so that's okay. So let's add just a little bit more phthalo green. And we're going, just try to match that color that's in your, um, do we have the reference photo up there? Oh, okay, we do. So maybe we need a little bit more phthalo blue. You are gonna mix the color that you feel is as closely represents the color that's in your image. Ah, it looks like more phthalo blue. That's okay. I've never mixed this color before, so it's going to take a minute. Okay, so now I need, now I can see that I need a lot more blue, and that's okay. Now I feel like this is closer. This feels closer. So we're mixing. Mixing, and maybe even a little bit more. I don't know, I'm looking back again, I want more blue. Phthalo blue is my favorite color. Can you tell by my nail polish? Okay, so I'm gonna write, I'm gonna take off some of this blue off my palette knife and I'm gonna pick up a little bit more phthalo blue from my container. Just put it off to the side and then take a little bit more and add it to this um, phthalo blue, green and white mixture that I've put together. And I think I'm gonna be happy with that. That feels good. And actually it's okay if it's a little streaky even, because as you can see in our um, 
in our reference image. It's not a perfect color. It's a little streaky. So let's leave it a little streaky. Okay. And I'm actually going to just take some of this off my palette knife by laying that down. Okay. Can we go back to my um, canvas? Okay, great. So as you can see, I just wiped my palette knife there. So I'm going to go ahead and just pick up some of my blue. And let's pick up just a, take this base blue that you created and pick up a little bit more phthalo and maybe a little phthalo green, just a tiny bit. And let's create the line across the bottom of the page. And let's stroke up and down or right and left, whatever feels good to you. Let's go right and left. Because I think I'm seeing some streaks of color right and left in this image and that's okay. So I'm using my straight edge of my number 14 brush and I'm using it to uh, make that line that I didn't finish drawing across the top of the page. And maybe, let me see. I'm gonna add a little black to this. So we're figuring out these colors as we go along. The name of this series is Mimic the Masters. So we're not gonna be perfect with this. Turns out that, um, yeah, so I'll tell you a little bit about what I found out about Jacob Lawrence. First of all, I'm so glad that Mary Bay decided that she wanted to do this particular artist because I was not familiar with him. I added a little black to my blue because it's just too happy. And even though um, there's a lot of contrast in Jacob Lawrence's paintings, um, they suggest turmoil and change. Um, these, this series of paintings that he was doing is about the great migration of African Americans from the South to the North. So um, this particular painting, um, number 58, <laughs> um, is of three girls who seem to be rather well-dressed in a nice kind of a school environment, and they're learning. They're actually learning. And at that time in the South, it was not possible for African-American children to be able to attend school full-time because they were working in the fields to help their, um, their parents pay for their living, you know, for their livelihood, for their to be able to eat and, and um, have clothes on their backs. So um, this particular painting is one of a series of 60 paintings that he did that he was commissioned by the WPA, the World, what is it called? No, not the World, it was the Work Progress Association, I think, let's see. Yes, Work Progress Administration started by FDR. So there's also a number 24, which is in stark contrast to this particular painting. So in this particular painting, you see, and we're gonna bring it up on the screen in just a second. You see um, African-American children bare chested and working in the fields at an age where they should be getting an education. So at the time that Jacob Lawrence, well, this was 1941 when he did this series of paintings and um, he was asked, yeah, uh, he was asked by the WPA to do this series of paintings about the migration. And it was the only series, it was the only information going out at that time about this great migration of African Americans from the South to the North. So these paintings are very instrumental in documenting African American history. I found it fascinating. It made me a little sad. I was like, Cheryl, would you start crying while you paint with these people? <laughs> but it was very emotional because it was like, you know, he talks about, because he was growing up during this time, right? And he talks about how um, his parents would let him know, like he's 12, 13 years old, they're already there in Harlem. And they would tell them, you know, hey, there's this, these families coming up and we have to help them, we have to help them get jobs and 
you know, let's take them some clothes, you know, your, your clothes from last summer will, you know, help them. And it was just, he grew up learning about, uh, you know, people moving. And so the fact that he was commissioned to do this, um, he's, it's a very interesting story. I'll just say that. And let me go back to instructing you a little bit here. Um, if you're having problems with getting your um, paint to run across your canvas, it could be because you need to add a little water. So go ahead and just dip your paintbrush one time and then go back to your color. And then it'll help you with um, moving your paint across the canvas. Okay. So yeah, it was fascinating. It's just so fascinating um, that all of these people were um, coming to the north because they wanted to, they heard that people could go to school, that children could go to school in the north. In the south, I think um, in the whole of the south at one time during the depression or, you know, during that time, there was only like 64 schools in the whole south for African American children. And they were always overcrowded and um, they didn't have enough supplies and they were cold. When I was doing this research, search, there was a picture of a group of, of school children huddled around a pot belly stove to keep warm at the beginning of class. But then as the class went on, you know, the average temperature in that room was like 50 degrees. And you know what it's like in the wintertime. You know, you have this, the temperature up to 70. One and you're like, it's cold in here, I need some more heat. Do you have a substitute for green? I don't think my kid came for green. Uh, there's no substitute for green. It's a primary color. Um, I apologize for that. And um, we will make sure that um, you are, um, we'll, we'll, we'll take care of you. We're, Totally apologize for that. I don't know why you didn't get green. But here, what you can do is just mix your blue and your, um, hey, wait a minute, what am I saying? There's no substitute for green. There's yellow and blue. So um, add some yellow to your blue, just a small amount. And then also don't forget about your um, black that you can add to that to give it some intensity so it's not so bright and happy looking. Um, as much as we love bright and happy colors, these are not necessarily what were the colors that were portrayed in uh, Jacob Lawrence's paintings. So we're trying our best to get um, close to what he was trying to do. And as you can see, I went out of the lines a little bit here, but that's okay because we're gonna go over those colors with some black and some brown. And um, also I always tell uh, my students to make sure that you Get to the edge of your paint. Go to the sides and paint on the edges of your canvas so that when you hang it, you don't have raggedy edges. That's what we call them, raggedy edges. Gotta clean those up. <laughs> okay. So yeah, so um, all you need to do to make green is, uh, let me do that for you. Okay, let's do that for um, Maya first before I move on. I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow with my palette knife. I'm gonna put that down here. I'm wiping that off before I go into my blue. And I just take a tiny bit of blue. So if you can see, that's how much blue I'm adding to um, this yellow color. But of course, I'm gonna add it to the side first because you don't wanna put too much and then just add that in. And there you go. Got some green. If that's not intense enough for you, you can add some more blue and you'll get a darker green. So yeah, so you should be okay. I don't know why I suddenly forgot how to mix green. <laughs> uh, it's been a long day, guys. I can tell you it's been a long day. All right, so we're doing a party with Netflix. So that's why I was, that's what I was doing today is getting their stuff ready to ship out. And I sound a little froggy, you know, but I'm here, I'm here. I'm really excited about paying this. So you're getting a hundred percent Cheryl. I'm trying, I'm trying. Okay. So, all right. I'm feeling like 
Um, yeah, I'm feeling like okay with that blue. I'm feeling okay with that blue. So I think we got a trivia question. Danny's got a trivia question for us. So when you get a chance, I know you're in the zone, peek up at the screen because he's got a question to ask you. And it's unrelated to um, the painting. It's just kind of fun stuff. So it says, what 2005 kids film was directed by Tim Burton? Nope. Is it multiple choice? Nope, not this one. It's not multiple choice. Not this one. <laughs> this should be. What do you mean not this one? one? The other ones are, but this one is not. Okay, it was 2005. Who's the Tim Burton freaks out there? Come on, somebody, raise your hand. Or just blurt it out. Or just blurt it out. Come on, Maria, you're smiling up there. I see you. Grace is searching it. Grace is searching I have no idea, or else I would like say something. What was that? I have no idea, if, or else I would like say something. But... Okay. I'm sorry. It's okay. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, nobody knows, Daddy. So give them the answer. Fine. He said, "Fine." Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Yeah. Tim Burton. See, if you had said Johnny Depp, then I would have got it. Well, he didn't direct it. Oh. Uh, okay. <laughs> Whatever. Fine. Okay. Next step. All right. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and rinse out my number fourteen brush. And I am just going to lay it down on my paper towel, push out the excess water, just let it lay there for a minute and grab my palette knife. All right, so the next color we're going to do is brown. And right now, we're not going to worry about that chalk, um, that line going around the chalkboard, because that's going to be where we clean up all of our mistakes, all right? So, um, Go ahead and grab your brown. Now, if you don't have brown, let me know. And then we can uh, mix some brown for you. Anyone not have brown? Can you pull up the chat window for me so I can see if anyone is missing brown? Oh, Willy Wonka, someone said. Willy Wonka, close. I didn't know people were using the chat. Okay. Coraline, and Coraline loved that movie. I love that movie. I've seen that movie more times than I care to admit. <laughs> uh, really want that. Yeah, but that's same it. Thing. It's the same thing. Yeah, so ding, ding, ding. There you go. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Ring a ding, ding. So I'm going to go ahead and take some chocolate and put that down. And then I'm going to rinse off my palette knife because the next color I'm going in for is yellow. So I'm going to pick up some yellow and put that off to the side. And then I'm going to rinse my palette knife off again. And I'm going to pick up a little white. Okay. Just a little bit, a little bit of white. And I'm going to put that down here. I'm going to pick up a little of my chocolate color. And I think I'm going to pick a little yellow. Mix those kind of together. More, it was kind of like 50 50 white. But then a little bit of yellow, more yellow to that. Yeah, that feels right. More like a milky chocolate, chocolate now. Okay, so our number 14 brush is really helpful here because that straight edge that we have here. Oh wait, let me put it here. Okay, so our straight edge is gonna help us make a straight line here, okay? So we're gonna pick up that color. Not too much paint on your brush. Because it'll just 
get sloppy. So don't have too much paint on your brush, just enough to put the color down. And I'm going to lay down my brush like this. And just go really slow. Can you see what I'm doing? No, nope, I don't think so. Hold on. Okay, so I'm laying my brush down using my straight edge and I'm just pulling it down. This is how you make a straight edge. Don't try to paint it like this because you'll never do it. So just lay your brush down and pull it down the canvas like this. A little bit at a time. So I know that my blue line is not straight, so I'm not following the blue line. I am following my chocolate line. No, it's not making me crave chocolate. <laughs> I had a really good cupcake yesterday, though. I love chocolate cupcakes. I'm just moving that down like that. Is that making sense? So of course I can go back in later and fill in that spot where I know I missed the blue, but I'm using my brown to create a new straight line with my number 14 brush. And I'm just pulling it down, straight down the canvas. So here I'm getting to that area where I went out of the line and I'm just overlapping that area. And then same thing here. Now we have, I have a true line to follow. So I'm just going to lay down my brush. I'm not in a hurry. I'm just pulling it straight down. How are we doing? Let me pull this back up so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm laying down my straight edge of my 14 brush and I'm just pulling it down the canvas. Laying it down and just pulling it in a straight line. Nice and slow. And I'm going to the edge of my canvas. So the other really interesting thing about um, this whole series, the migration series, is that um, he painted them all at once. He had 60 paintings. He was, commissioned to do 60 paintings. And um, he did them, number one, on cardboard. So he was not painting on canvas. So that could be why we get some unusual textures in the actual painting. If you go to um, the Museum of Modern Art.org and look at the original painting, you'll see that there's a lot going on because he painted on cardboard. Now, he studied under this guy named Savage. Um, and uh, Lawrence considered himself a cubist artist. So if you think of cubist artists, probably right away you think of um, Pablo Picasso and George, um, what's his last name? George, 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 what's his last name? Um, I can't remember. Brock, George Brock. And, um, you know, they were the famous cubists. But if you look at um, Savage, the guy that, um, Jacob Lawrence learned from who was also a cubist, and his paintings are fascinating. So um, again, I just have to thank Mary for turning me, Mary, Mary Bay, it, uh, for turning me on to this guy because it took me down this rabbit hole of painters, and I love when that happens. <laughs> I get to find out about all these um, new artists. So. Um, uh, what else was I telling you about him? So he went to the University of Washington. Now I'm reading notes because I want to make sure I don't forget anything. Um, and now I'm going over to the other, the, the base of the drawing. So same thing, just use your number 14, the straight edge, the bristles, and just move to the right or the left, whatever you're comfortable with. And that's how you get your straight lines, okay? Don't try to do this. This is not going to work. You're going to have to lay your brush down flat and just use the straight edge of the brush to create the straight line. Like that. And then you can go back and forth like this and finish. 
Uh, let's see. Oh, so yeah, so the Cubist period uh, was originated, of course, by Pablo Picasso. And the whole theory behind the Cubist movement was that art shouldn't ha have to imitate nature. So that's why, you know, when Picasso painted women's faces and nature or whatever, it's always really bizarre looking because he wasn't trying to mimic um, nature. He was trying to just do what he felt. You know, he's just trying to create new art. And um, anyway, so yeah, surprisingly, um, Jacob Lawrence was a cubist. So I was looking for a lot more form and function in his work. So I was really surprised to see that, um, you know, he was so much of a, um, ab like kind of an abstract surrealist in terms of how he portrayed his subjects. You know, they don't always have faces and, you know, they're pretty much just shapes, you know, uh, depicting human beings. There's no real, like you can't identify them really. You just know that there are people. So this one, number 58, I find the irony kind of overwhelming that it's my birthday. Number 58, the three girls on the chalkboard. So yeah, I'm just dragging this across. Look at that. Just makes it so nice. Now, of course, I see places where there's little holes, and that's fine. And don't worry about your colors being perfect either. Um, he used a lot of browns and blacks in his works uh, to contrast with the bright colors that he used. I think the bright colors kind of came from um, his influences by his wife. Um, what's her name? Gwendolyn? Gwendolyn. Gwendolyn Knight. So I looked at some of her art, and she's from um, Barbados, I think. And so, you know, she has a lot of bright colors in her work. So that could be, you know, where he got that kind of uh, influence from in terms of the colors that he used. But yeah, he used this really kind of dull, kind of washed out browns and blacks um, to uh, create his works. And then, of course, the colors of the African-American people that he used, of course, he just used black. He didn't try to differentiate skin tones at all. He just used the color black, which is kind of cool. So I'm just taking a little bit of black and putting that down, taking some more brown. I'm taking a little yellow and just maybe a touch of white and mixing those together. See what I get. Oh, do you need to move that over? Okay. Yeah, so check it out. So I'm, I'm just kind of not even mixing these together. And uh, let's uh, use your palette knife and uh, just pick up some of that color. And just slather that on there. Just lay it down all the way. I'm experimenting. <laughs> Wonder if you used a palette knife. Just make sure that your lines are kind of straight. Just lay your palette knife. And if you don't like that, then just go back to your brush and just use your brush to just kind of smooth it all out. And don't forget your edges. Don't forget your edges. I always tell you guys that, and then I forget mine. So I'm going back. <laughs> Danny's laughing at me. Sometimes I do. Most of the times I don't, though. Most of the times I don't forget. Plus, there's nothing like hanging a picture on the wall and the edges are unfinished. It's like, really? You like couldn't take that paint over to the side of your canvas? Make it look more professional. 
Okay, so cool. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Don't let your edges of your, your blackboard edges be perfect. Don't let it be perfect. Okay, this is one painting where don't make it be perfect. Make it be a little willy nilly with the colors. Hey Grace, look at those great lights you have around you. That's cool. I like it. Okay, so I'm gonna go back because I got like a little edge over here where I need to fill in that color. So I'm gonna pick up the little, the little blue, little green, and just a touch of white. And I'm gonna go, oh wait, I guess I'll pick up some black too. Pick up some black and I'm gonna go in and fix these little edges right here. Can you see what I'm doing? Okay, yeah. Okay, so guess, ooh, we get to use our hair dryers, guys. I know you're looking forward to that. <laughs> and then uh, when we come back, then we'll do another trivia question. Or we can do it now. Yeah, we can do it now. And then uh, I'll go ahead and get my hair dryer and then I'll. Dry my canvas. Okay. Oh, it's on. Yeah. What's the question? The question is Who is the villain of the Dark Knight Batman film? Oh, good grief. <laughs> These are girls, they don't know anything about Batman. No, come on now. <laughs> Heath Ledger was in the movie, so, you know. Who is the villain oh, of the damn, Dark Knight? I just gave it away, didn't I? Oh, wait. Oh, it said D. Somebody said the Joker. Good it was job, Catherine. Man. Good job. <laughs> I guess there are some Batman girls in the See? group. Come on now. <laughs> uh, I would. I guess I could have guessed that. So is Batman. What were the other choices? Uh, the Riddler, Bane, and Pink. You oh, I would never have gotten it. Nope. I'm not into those kind of movies. I like. I got like, one I like, for you. I got one for you, don't worry. Oh, oh you do? But, but go ahead. Okay. I like like so I like Harry Potter and I liked I like I like most kids' movies. They're a lot more happy than other stuff that's on TV these days. Okay. So I'm going to get my trusty hair dryer and dry this off. Oh wait, before I do that, do I want to do my edges? If I were you guys, before I turn the hair dryer on, if I were you, if you have a ruler in the house, you might want to grab it. If you don't, then we'll just have to, I'll have to teach you how to do this without um, kind of ruining your straight lines that you've already created. All right, here we go. What? Oh, I forgot to mute myself. Give me just a second.
All right, I'm back, guys. Uh, let me see who. <coughs> Let's see who have I not seen. Let's see. But how, oh yeah, that, that's why. Oh, so there's only six people who want to be seen. Well, that's no fun. All right, fine. <coughs> Sorry, got a little tickle in my throat. Have you noticed that? <coughs> if you get a little tickle in your throat and you're outside, you're like, you want to run away because people think you have COVID. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, I'm all paranoid all the time. <coughs> I was talking to someone today. I went to uh, my Chamber of Commerce meeting today and she started, uh, she got a tickle in her throat. <coughs> and she was like, I don't have COVID. I'm like, it's okay. I'm, I'm not paranoid about that. So I just took a little drink so I can cure my tickle. And now, <clears throat> oh, Grace just went to go get her hair dryer thing. How you guys doing? You okay? You right there with me? Okay. <clears throat> All right. So you need to grab your reference, I mean, your tracer. <clears throat> And uh, <clears throat> we'll do, you know what? We better do our line first or we're gonna be in trouble. So um, <clears throat> you could just pick up some regular old black, but we're gonna mix it with a little brown. We're not gonna do pure black. Let's start. <clears throat> Let's start with a uh, little brown and make it black. So I'm just taking this much. <clears throat> And I'm wiping off my palette knife and I'm gonna add a little black to that. Well, quite a bit of black. So like that much, okay? We don't want pure black because it'll just look weird against those mixed colors that we've created. So um, <clears throat> just make sure that it's darker than the brown and the blue that you have on your uh, canvas right now. And actually that's gotta be a little bit darker. So I'm gonna put a little bit more black with that. <clears throat> There we go. That's going to be perfect. And we're going to use, yeah, I think that'll work. Let's see. Uh, maybe a little bit more black. We're creating that line around between the chalkboard and the wall, which was probably, you know, this beat up old wood wall in the classroom. We have a question. We have a question. Uh, who are your other favorite painters, paintings? And any blogs, podcasts, books, websites you would recommend? Hmm, my other favorite painters. Oh, okay. So um, we are doing Mimic the Masters. We are just finishing up the last painting in our other series, which was um, Georgia O'Keeffe. And um, who else? I had Georgia O'Keeffe. Why can't I remember the second one? <laughs> I just had a brain fart. Um, Georgia O'Keeffe, what did we do last week? Oh, Magritte, jeez. I love surrealists. So we did uh, Georgia O'Keeffe, uh, Magritte, and then we're doing Salvador Dali tomorrow. So Salvador Dali is my number one favorite. I have uh, been to his museum uh, in St. Petersburg. Uh, well, originally it was in Tampa. I've been there. Every time I go to Florida, I go there and I get t-shirts always, <laughs> and they improve. Oh, there's a Dali experience there. You have to go when you go to um, St. Petersburg, Florida again. Um, it allows you to go inside of one of Dali's paintings. It is the most freaked out, cool experience I've ever had at an art museum. <clears throat> so um, yeah, so Dolly's my favorite um, in terms of podcasts. No, I just kind of read up on the artists that I like. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> those are my favorites. Thanks for asking. So yeah, so we're doing um, Archibald Motley for the other part of our Harlem Renaissance um, Mimic the Masters series. Um, and then um, there's a couple others. Um, ooh, I can't, the names are escaping me right now. I don't know if I can 
feel like this is chocolate enough or if this is dark enough. So I'm going to add a little bit more black to this. <clears throat> and maybe I should have done this the other way around where I'm mixing, um, adding the brown to my black. But this is where I want to be and I don't want a lot of paint in my brush. Okay, just on the tips. So <clears throat> to get this straight line, if you have a straight edge, that's great. Um, if not, and you want to do it freehand, I recommend the touch and move method, meaning take the edge of your 14 brush and just touch it down. Just touch it and move to the, to the left or the right or whatever. And the same kind of thing where you just kind of move in a straight line. Just do it slowly. Don't press hard. And just take your time moving down the page. So just kind of touch and move. Yeah, you should, ch you should check out Archibald Motley if you like the Harlem Renaissance painters. There's, he's so interesting. Um, I think he also did some work during the, with the WPA, and he captures a lot of uh, nightlife in African American history during the Harlem Renaissance. What I love about um, the Harlem Renaissance painters um, and that whole art community, like imagine if, um, you know, where I live here in Oak Park, um, the arts district, we have arts district, so that's where my studio is. So imagine um, in Harlem, if everybody um, in that time, they all knew each other, they all lived or, you know, worked close to each other, like and Hughes and, um, you know, all these famous poets and writers and singers and everything. Gosh, you know, just to have been there. I, I wish I could go back in the time capsule and have been there. But yeah, so my studio is right next door to a company called The Music Garden, and they teach um, children music. And then I'm also right next door to a children's acting studio. So I get to see and hear all kinds of neat stuff. We have some nice sounds going on right before. <laughs> before this painting today. Um, but yeah, so artists tend to kind of congregate together, kind of helps you grow and experience new kinds of things, things that you may not have um, checked out before. So yeah, so um, <clears throat> our line may not be 100% straight, but it is giving the impression of a line and that's what we're going for, right? Can you check to see if uh, there's any more chat over there? But yeah, really good um, comment question. Thank you. All right, <clears throat> so I'm gonna go along the bottom. So same thing. Um, I'm gonna start right here because I have like a, some white space right there. I'm just gonna lay down my brush and then I'm just gonna move it to the right. Same thing here, I'm just gonna lay down my brush and move it to the right. Lay it down, and then just move it to the right. Just the way to keep your lines kind of straight is not to put a lot of pressure. Let your straight edge of your number 14 brush do the work. So just lay it down. Don't put hardly any pressure at all and just move it to the right. Or if you're left, in the other direction. Just lay it down and move it to the right. <clears throat> How we doing our trivia, Danny? <laughs> he read my mind. What does Alan name the baby in what? The hangover. The hangover. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta like, know that movie, right? Mm. You know that movie. 
Okay, Grace is like laughing like crazy. So she must have an answer. Let's check the chat. See, maybe she wrote something down. Nope, man. No, nope, she didn't write anything down. She just tickled. That's all. <laughs> See, it was a good fun question to make you smile and laugh for us. <laughs> there we go. Oops, you made me mess up. Sorry. I had too much uh, paint on my brush. Grace, she's never seen it. She was just laughing. All right. <laughs> just tickle. Right. Anybody seen the hangover? You guys can't be that young. No, Catherine said no. No. Carlos. Uh, Mary Mary Bay said Carlos. Oh, good job, Mary. Maya Bay. said D. Yep. All right. Okay. I'm glad somebody's seen it. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> it was Carlos. Carlos, I've never seen that movie. Baby Carlos. It's a good movie. Watch it if you get a chance. So one of my favorite movies is Robots. Oh, see, so Mary, Mary Bay said Wolfpack. Yeah, that's that's part of the movie. So see if you knew the movie, you would know what she was referring to. Oh, yeah, to. I have no idea what she was referring <laughs> to. I was born in 1958, remember? Hey, well, you didn't have to say it again. <laughs> well, I'm sure they didn't forget. You never know. Maybe they did. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> all right, so I messed up over here because Danny was talking to me. You made me mess up. I was talking to them. Okay, <laughs> so if you have some problems with your brush not moving around the, uh, across the canvas correctly, it's probably because you don't have enough water. So add a little water to your brush, but then before you touch your canvas, make sure you dab the excess water off your brush. Ta-da! Okay, just one more little line. Now I'm barely touching. Now you guys can do a lot with just barely touching your brush to the canvas. Like if you don't press down hard on your brush when you're doing something like this, you can't possibly make a mistake. Just barely touch the brush to the canvas and you'll be fine. There we go. <clears throat> All right. Whew. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Uh, what am I ready for? I'm ready to put my traceable down and put those girls down. Put those bright colors on those dresses. So yeah, where was I at talking about um, Jacob Lawrence? So let's see. So did we show you the contrasting? Oh, we did. We showed you the contrasting photo of the little children working in the fields. Oh, he's put me on camera again. He never tells me when he's put me on camera. So, <laughs> uh, hi there. <laughs> so let's see. <clears throat> yeah, okay, so look up, whoever was asking about um, influencers uh, for Jake, or for me, who I like as a painter, I've suddenly fell in love with August Savage just from seeing his work. I mean, he's, he has a lot of George Brock's influence, like that cubism, that melding of shapes and forms to represent an object as opposed to it being the object, you know? I mean, that's like the essence of cubism to me. To me, um, Picasso took it too far. He just took it too far <laughs> to me. And I know, you know, there's people, I've never loved Picasso. I've never loved him. He was just too far out there for me. Um, being the father of cubism, I like what uh, came off of his um, introducing artists to that form. Um, so August Savage is the one uh, who taught who um, Jacob Lawrence uh, learned under. So I've looked at his stuff and it reminds me of George Brock. So you got to check his stuff out. It's really, really interesting. Um, what else did I find out? Um, after school programs. That's how he got, uh, Jacob Lawrence got introduced to art. So when you guys have kids, make sure you get them in some extracurricular art programs something outside of what they're offering in schools today because what they're offering in schools today is not enough. Okay, so the way you're gonna do this is you're gonna take your traceable, 
and you're gonna line it up with what you've already painted before you put the carbon down. You're gonna line this all up. So I'm lining up this edge here with my uh, painting underneath, lining that up first, right? So I'm gonna take my hand, I'm gonna hold this down now that I've got it all lined up and I'm gonna move this out of the way and I'm gonna slide my carbon underneath, okay? So now I know where everything is lined up. Oops, put my paint. Uh, can you grab that pen for me, please? Ooh, are we doing two paints? Yeah, we are. Oh, thank you. Okay, so yeah, so I'm gonna start at the left and go to the right. So I'm just taking my ballpoint pen and I'm tracing her little dress. So yeah, so if you look at um, August Savage's paintings, you'll see um, where Jacob got his influence uh, in terms of the cubism style of representing um, the human form, Savage is kind of the same. Well, he's definitely the same way. He he is uh, where Jacob learned his technique. Oops. Yeah, I'm just following this around. Don't forget your numbers. Now, when I did the research on these paintings, did not find, like, what was really curious to me was, okay, why the numbers? Why two, three, four? Why not A, B, C? Why not, you know, cat, dog, bird? Why numbers? There was no answer. I couldn't find one. <laughs> so if you guys want to research that some more and get back to me, I would love that. But I could not find an answer for that. And again, these are paintings uh, numbered 1 through 60 that um, Jacob Lawrence did chronicling the migration of African Americans from the South, where opportunities were more than limited, to the North, where education was a, a beacon of hope for families who wanted their children to have more than they did. Other thing, you know, just as an aside, you know, in terms of being an African American, I guess I can speak from personal experience that typically African American people don't know their heritage. When you were growing up, you probably went to school with people who would say things like, oh yeah, I'm Italian and I'm, I'm Irish and I'm this and I'm that and blah, 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 blah. Well, imagine being a little kid in middle school and hearing that and not knowing, not having your own answer to that question, not knowing, uh, you know, where you came from. And so that was also a dilemma for young people coming from the South because keeping people in the dark, keeping African American people in the dark, keeping them ignorant and uneducated is how um, you know, you control people. So being educated is the key out of ignorance. And that is why it was such a strong reason for the majority of the migrants to move up north. But yeah, I experienced the same thing in school. And it wasn't until I was an adult and I did my own research that I found out about my um, family and where we came from. We came from the south came from Florida area to move up north to Chicago, which was one of the, Chicago was like one of the main cities where um, African-Americans came from the South. On the, uh, yeah. 
So what was that? Good to know. Good to know, huh? So there we go. So before you uh, finish your drawing, make sure that you lift up the sides and keep your hand in place. Make sure you got everything down. Okay, so if you can't see something, you might want to take your pen and go over one more time. Okay, but you can also use your reference Im image. Be brave, don't be scared. Okay, sorry about that. I always have the peanut gallery in the background trying to tell me what to do. You know who that is, that's Danny. Um, so, <laughs> but what would I do without him, huh? Okay, let's see. Um, I'm in Florida. Oh, Maria, she's in Florida, yeah. Yeah. That must be why I love Florida so much. Someone would just say to me today, man, you really love Florida. Yeah, I've been there like so many times. It's been a lot of spare time there. I enjoy it. I, I just, I feel at home there. It must be for that reason. So, okay. Guess what? I'm going to use some of my dark, 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 dark brown that I've already mixed because I don't want to waste paint. Now, I can add some black to that color over here. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint the silhouette part of um, my girls. Okay, so I'm, wait, I'm wetting my number 12 brush. I got a nice point going on there. And I'm gonna add just a little black to the tip of my brush, like that. And I'm just gonna add it in. Now, this is pretty thick paint right now. So um, in order to get smooth lines, you might wanna add a little bit of water to make it like an ink consistency, not too watery. And then I'm going to go ahead and then just use the tip of the brush. Watch, watch me do this. Um, can you zoom in on this, please? Okay. So I'm just using the very tip of my brush. So to get into those small places, that's what you want to do, is just use the very last two hairs on the tip of this brush. And when you get to those small areas, definitely you're just using the last two hairs on the brush. And how's that looking? I don't want to cover it up so you can't see it. Okay, so we're just dabbing into those spaces. And I'm just pulling my color down the length of the arm. Now you can add more black because he literally just paints them black. So I'm going to pick up a little bit more black and add it to this dark brown that I have here. I would love to see his work though. Um, I think I read that um, the majority of his work is at the Museum of Modern Art, or no, MoMA, Museum of Modern, yeah, that's right, Museum of Modern, Modern Art. And so it's split between there and a uh, couple other locations, or one other location, I can't remember what it was right now. So use the tip of your brush to get into the tiny little spaces. If it doesn't feel like um, you're getting enough paint, just make sure that you um, add some water because you want to ink consistency. You don't want paste, you want ink. And just use the very tip of your brush. 
And now I'm doing her other arm. And then don't worry about the numbers. We're going to do the numbers. That's going to be the last thing we do. Okay. And I love those bright colors. It does remind me of the Caribbean. So when you guys are all on East Coast time, this is like late night, Friday night for you guys. <laughs> I'm glad it wasn't any later because, you know, I'm old, so I have to go to sleep. <laughs> These days, you know, you guys tend to stay home a lot. Like younger people don't go out to clubs anymore. I mean, especially not during COVID, but I mean, even before that, it was still kind of a, you know, kind of be with your friends kind of thing. No more bar or so much. Which is good to save money. Cool. I'm happy with this color. It's not too dark. It's like perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and do her legs. Number one. No, she's actually number two. Let's see. Hmm? Move it up a little bit. Okay, there we go. So what else can I tell you about Jacob? He served in World War II, and he actually did art while he was at war. He documented um, what he painted in a series called The War Series, and you can find that um, at MoMA as well. Very interesting. So I'm going to go, I'm going to carry her leg over to her ankle, over the edge of the fanny. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Well, we have black colors coming up. Okay, how are we doing over there, Danny boy? Yeah, they're doing fine. See, when people start painting, they get in the zone. Let's mess that zone up. Time for another question. Oh, uh, mess the zone up. Does anybody seem super bad? I have no idea. I have no idea. Mm -mm -mm. No early 2000 Let's movie. see, Aaron is smiling, so yep. I don't know if that's a good sign or not. That's a good sign. <laughs> No, and Grace, of course, she's laughing as usual. Grace just stays cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Nothing wrong with smiling. So um, let me just say something to the people who are not on camera because I miss you. I'm sorry that I can't see you, but um, I do hope that you will come out of hiding for our group photo at the end because that's always nice and a uh, nice little remembrance. Uh, let's see. Can you just click up there for a second? I want to make sure I'm recording this. Yeah, you are. Oh, good. Good. Uh, so, um, yeah, we can share this later on. So I did tell you guys that I'm painting with Netflix next week, right? And we, so I was working with them and I was like, well, what do you guys want to paint? Because they didn't want to paint um, any of the stuff that we had. They want to do something custom. So I said, well, what do you want to paint? 
And like, we want to paint the, well, it wasn't like a bunch of people, just one person. She said, we want to paint the Hollywood sign. So I'm like, oh, that's a great idea. <clears throat> so, of course, you know, I had to take it to the extreme because I'm like, but it's Netflix. This could mean, you know, a television show. <laughs> but, <yeah. laughs> uh, so I stressed over it forever. And then I wound up doing something so simple. And then they loved it because I was stressing. I'm like, they're not going to want this. It's too simple. They won't want it. And uh, she was like, oh, I love it. <clears throat> we'll take that one. So, yes, I got that result. And um, nice little feather in our cap. New joining again. Oh, we have a new person. She just opened up the camera. Oh, hi, Diane. Oh, hey there. No answer on the question, Laura. No answer on the question. Come on, guys. Well, Danny picked these questions for you, you know, because you're. I would not. I gave him the assignment. I'm like. I think we got people who are just graduating from college. You guys, are you still in school or you, have you graduated already? Raise your hand if you're still in school. Okay, I guess, uh, okay. Oh, oh, there's a couple, okay. All right. So yeah, yeah, so we're both old then. <laughs> All right. All right, we're going to go ahead and put up that answer then. So All right, the and then maybe you could dig up one of the ones from um, the other one that we did for them to answer. Ogle. Nobody knew uh, McLovin? McLovin doesn't sound familiar at all? No, nope, apparently not. Somebody knows McLovin. Come on. No, they don't. Yeah, they're smiling. That's good enough, I guess. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, how's that? Yes, you do. You have to think like 20 years ago. Or no, don't do that. What's 20 years ago? That was uh, 2000. Wait, 2000 was 20. We're 2020. So, yeah. So, 97, 98. Oh, as far as when they were born? Yeah. Yeah, I guess that could be the case. I was graduating. I was out of, fresh out of high school. <laughs> Most of us have been born in like 99, 98 or later. Oh, um, there you go. All right. Thank you. That helps. <laughs> Jeez. All right. Well, I guess I got to find something different. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Wait, maybe you got to know this one, though. What? You, know, no, no, no. you might know this one, though. This, was, this one was for you. What? Oh, okay. This is an old people question. Okay. No, not that old. How does... What does... What does Dave have to Dave. call Brennan and Step Brothers? Yeah. Oh! What does Dale have to call Brennan and Step Brothers? Yes. Dale have to call Brennan. Don't you blur it out. I have no idea. No, you didn't watch it good enough. No, I don't know all those details. Well, if you watch the movie, you can hear. I have no idea. <laughs> I'm I'm pretty sure these guys don't like any old. of the well, these are funny movies at least. I mean they're not yes, they're old, but you know that's a rumor to them. Step brothers. That is a funny movie though. I do like that movie. Whoa. Oh, oh. Catherine, what happened? <laughs> what was that? Catherine had something scared. <laughs> My cat jumped up onto the table oh, with nice. me. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, how dare you paint without me? Right. Cat be all into your creativity. So yeah, so for these little small spaces, you guys, you know, with your number 12 brushes, you're just using the very tip of the brush to get into those little spaces. There's like a little hair on the end and that's what you use. Don't press down too hard or you're going to get like furry arms. You don't want furry arms. You want precision. And the only way you're going to get precision is by using the tips 
of your brush. That little, those two little hairs hanging off the end, that's what you use. And just take your time, we've got plenty of time. We're gonna finish in plenty of time. Okay, when we get to this last one over here on the legs, yeah, there's a little space in between there. So to address that, you can pick up a little yellow or you can pick up a little white and then just draw that line in between with the last two hairs on your little brush. That dog was his name. Or it's what you have to call him. I don't remember that. Nobody remembers that. Yes, ma'am. It was like my favorite, it's like one of my favorite movies, and that, even I don't know that. It's got to go to the 2010. Uh, okay, you need to work on your trivia skills, dude. I guess so. <laughs> well, you didn't give me the exact demographics that we were going to do. I tried to give you the demographics, dude. I said, I'm pretty sure some people are still in school or they're just about to graduate. So, I guess. All right. All right. So he's going to get some new trivia, and in the meantime, we're going to work on these legs over here. So what I did was I just picked up a little, here, let me move this closer to the camera. What I did was I just picked up a little yellow and a little white, so it's lighter. And I'm just going to use the tip of my brush. Um, can you zoom in on that, please? Well, you can zoom in on my canvas. It's fine. I'm uh, just using the tip of my brush and I'm just overlapping my color that I created onto the canvas. Okay. And then I'm just shaking that color out of my brush by tapping the sides. Don't push down on the bottom of the can or the flash of your brush because you'll just ruin it. And I want you guys to be painting all the time. Paint all the time. Art is good for the soul. It is soul food. Just go ahead and uh, let that extra water get out of your brush by touching the, the brush to your towel. And then go back and pick up your darker color. And then just go right next to that color. You just lay down that lighter color. Just right next to it. Should be fine. There we go. And I think I'm done with this leg almost. Right over to the edge. Don't forget the edge. Don't forget to paint your edges. We don't want any half finished paintings hanging up at your house. Put this in your office. Remind yourself to do some research on this guy because he is interesting. This whole journey that he embarked upon is really interesting, especially considering that um, I think he was like one of the first. African American artists to be um, exhibited at a gallery during that time in Harlem. So um, you'll find a lot of interesting information that I did not spend nearly enough time researching. But it's very fascinating. Archie and his wife. I'd like, love to see some movies about some of these people. I think we did great, um, the industry did a great thing with hidden figures. Um, I wanted to do a series on hidden figures. I always, I always try to come up with different ideas for painting outside of the, you know, usual things you see at paint and sit parties. Because like it doesn't, I don't know. There's nothing wrong with that. I should not get. There's nothing wrong with that because it's gotten a whole new generation into um, being interested in art and interested in painting. 
But I like to take it a little step further and, um, you know, just offer people the opportunity to learn a little bit more about history. And, and what was so great about this whole experience is that Mary found me because of that. And then she offered me somebody that was not on my agenda, someone who I'd never heard of. So I appreciate that a lot. And, uh, and by telling me about Jacob Lawrence, then I learned about Augusta Savage and Gwendolyn Knight. I mean, it's just, <laughs> just a chain reaction kind of an effect. So very grateful for that. Grateful for the opportunity to be doing art here in Oak Park on a Friday night. So yeah, so just remember guys, when you get in those small areas, don't panic, okay? Don't try to use your whole brush. You're only supposed to be using the tip when you get in these small areas. So just let the tip of your brush do the work, even if it takes you two, three, four, five tries to get the paint down in that small area, you want to do that. And if it, you're having trouble with the paint coming out, then dip your paintbrush in some water and get your paint to the consistency of ink so that you're like using an ink tip to fill in that extra space in those small areas. So I always found it, you guys, it's so funny. So literally like 1999, 1998, our audience was born, right? So you guys don't even know about, like in the old days, they used to have people who would paint signs. That was their whole job every day. They would just paint signs. They had to um, paint signs on people's doors, you know, in office buildings. If there was a sign on the door that said that person's name, someone hand painted that sign. And they probably got paid minimum wage to do that. But they were true artisans. Because as you can see, <laughs> painting in small spaces is no small feat. But it's all about pressure. It's all about varying the pressure from a really light stroke with just the tip of your brush to pressing down a little more to get uh, more paint down to pushing the whole brush down cover a larger area. So I've got all their little legs into place. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse out my brush because the next area, actually, I think I'm gonna rinse my brush out. I'm gonna use my number 14 for this next part. And um, the color we're gonna be picking up is red. So I'm really excited about that. I hope you are too. Uh, it is exciting when you're laying down one of these bright colors after you've been working with um, darker colors for a while. So um, I'm going to go ahead and grab my palette knife and I'm going to lay down some red. Lay down some red. And so never use a, a color straight out of the bottle. Always custom mix your colors, right? So we're going to take a little black. And since I already have some brown, I'm going to use some of this brown. And I'm just going to take just a tiny bit of it like that. And I'm going to mix it into my red because it's going to give me a not so Audrey Hepburn red and give me more of a, oh yeah, that's right. You guys don't know who Audrey Hepburn is. <laughs> Sorry. Breakfast at Tiffany's? No, doesn't ring a bell, huh? All right. Um, what red would this be? Uh, it's not, no, I can't think of reference. Uh, Katy Perry red. Okay. <laughs> We don't want a Katy Perry red. We want more of a, I uh, have no idea. It's just red. Just red. We dark, want a red, red that's not just a stark red. We want um, a red that's got some depth to it. So I added a little of my black or brown to the red, and this is what I got. So if you look at that red and this red, there's a little difference. So we're going to take our number 14 brush. 
dip it in some water, let the paper towel soak off the excess, and then we're going to pick up a little thread that I've mixed. And it's a straight edge, so that's why I'm using my number 14 brush, right? Because this dress is a kind of straight line, right? So we're going to go right next to her arm there, and we're just going to lay down that red line. Ooh, and now I'm look, putting down that red, and I'm like, no, that's wrong. I want some white with that. I think I want to put some white with that. So we're mimicking the master, so you know, let's try it in here. So I'm going to add a little white to that. Not too much, because then you'll get pink, okay? So be careful. So do just a little dab of white. See how much I put there? Look at, you can barely tell it's there. Okay, I'm going to wipe off this excess white. And I'm going to mix that in. Yeah, that was just too red. Gonna add a little more white. So this is a combination of red, white, and a tiny bit of this brownish black that I had. So, but you know, there's very small parts. So to, I'll mix it again for those who were, maybe have been looking somewhere else. Um, so I took a little red like this. Um, can you see this? Okay, I took a little red and I went over to my um, black or my brownish black. And I'm picking up a little bit of that. See the part? So there's like four parts red to this one part of black. And I'm mixing that in. This is how you mix colors. You want to mix uh, the color, uh, let's say brown, for instance, or purple, whatever. You don't mix equal parts of red and blue. You start with red, and then you add slowly to that red a little bit of blue to create purple so you get to where you want to be. So I'm going to add a little bit more brown or black. And then I'm going to add some more white to this to give me a, a color that's not like candy apple, right? I want something that's a little more pastel -y, a little dirty, a little, um, yeah, like this. It's not exactly red. It's kind of a, I don't know, what color is that? I don't know. It's like a strawberry kind of color, I think. And I feel like that's going to feel more like true to what he put down on canvas. So let's try that. Yes, I like that better. Plus, I think the idea of the red or the white um, helps with the opacity. Ooh, so um, go ahead and go around to the other side. Of her dress using your straight edge. And it's not uncommon for acrylic paint to need more than one coat. So don't get freaked out because this color isn't laying down the way you see in your reference image. It's just the nature of the beast. That's just how acrylic paint acts. Unless, of course, you're using. Um, professional artist grade paints, which even those paints still, you have to add white to them to get the colors that you want. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going down the side of the dress and I'm leaving the middle lines because I'm going to put those in before I paint over them. 
So I'm going to add a little um, brown to the tip of my brush, or you can add black. That's up to you. But mix it into your red first before applying it to the canvas. And make sure you don't have an overwhelming amount of paint on your brush when you go to do those dark lines. So as you can see, this is a lot darker than this color. And that's what I'm going to use to create my defining lines here. So I'm just going up like that. And then here. And then there. And I think I'll go on the outside here too, because there seems to be another line. And then actually there's a little line on the bottom of the dress. I'm going to go ahead and add that in. And I'm just using my straight edge to make those straight lines. Okay, so I'm gonna go back and I think I'm gonna pick up a little more white. Because sometimes you just need to add some white to make a color do what it needs to do. To help with the uh, opacity. The opaqueness. So yeah, let's try this. So, yeah, this is more of a strawberry color, I think. Or yeah, like a lipstick color. So I'm just taking the straight edge of my brush and I'm going in between those lines I've just created. Hopefully getting some more intensity in my color. And now I can go in between. That feels a little better. Does anybody know Sandra Cisneros, the author? What's the name of her story? Um, House on Mongo Street? Yes, ma'am. Who said that? Vanessa. Uh, I love that book. That was a good trivia question. Yeah. yeah it was, as I was painting, somehow she popped into my head. It kind of made me think about her because her stories were about young girls growing up in Chicago, as a matter of fact. I follow her on Instagram. I just loved her stories. Also, Mango Street, correct, yes. Did you find any new ones? That was just one. <laughs> That's a good one. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Okay, so I, I'm feeling okay about this dress. Okay, so next we get to mix the fabulous color of orange. Now, do you guys have orange in your kits or are we mixing orange? Because I don't remember. I don't have orange. So okay. I guess we could mix in red and yellow. <laughs> yeah, we're mixing orange. Okay, so, but that orange that we're looking at right there is mostly um, yellow. So we don't mix it equal parts. So let me demo it for you guys. So we're going to start with yellow. And then we're going to take a little, actually we're going to put some white in there first. Let's put some white in there because that's more of like a, pastelly orange. So let's mix a little uh, white in with a uh, little bit of yellow. So we should have a pastel yellow first. 
Can they see this okay? And uh, I'm feeling like that might work. If not, we'll find out in a minute. So I'm taking um, this much red. You can see that. Very small amount. And I'm mixing that into my pastel yellow. Actually, I'm feeling like it needs more red. So I'm going to add just a tiny bit more. I'm running out of paper. Always do. I know. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I'm happy with that orange. And so I am going to pick up my Oh, wait a minute, did I miss a spot? I missed a spot on her arm. How did I miss a whole spot on her arm? I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and pick up some of my orange on my flat brush. And not too much paint. So always make sure you have, you control your paint. Don't let the paint control you. And let's go ahead and lay down some of this orange. And yes, it's going to take you more than one coat, but this paint dries relatively fast. So it shouldn't be a problem for you to put down an additional color or additional coat. And when we get to this arm area, you may find, oh, okay, I'm gonna go against the braid right here. You may find that you run into some tight spots. If you run into some tight spots, go ahead and change your brush. Don't be stubborn like I can be sometimes. I don't need a new brush, I can fit in that little space. go. And don't worry about how it looks. I told you about acrylic paint. You're going to need another coat. So even if it looks terrible right now, it's going to look great in a minute. So don't worry. Can you show how you made orange again? Uh, sure. Just a second. And how big is the original of this painting? Oh, that's, that's a question. good question. Good question, Grace. Uh, hmm. That is a good question. Uh, okay, so let me do some uh, orange for you again. Hold on just a second. So I'm going to start with white this time to get this result. Uh, yeah, here, let me get another palette. Okay. I need you. Right, but I don't want to take the camera over. Okay. Thank you. So I'm uh, starting with some white, and then I'm going to add a little yellow to that. We'll put it to the side first, and then let's see. Yellow is actually kind of potent sometimes, but then it's so weak when you lay it on um, top of another color. So make your pastel um, yellow first. And then we're adding, what was that? 
Jake and Lawrence. And then I'm adding this much bread. We're going to add a little bit at a time. And now I'm feeling like I don't like this orange. I have to add some more yellow to it. It's feeling more like flesh color to me. So I add some more yellow in. Okay, that's a little better. I'm going to add a little bit more yellow. It's 18 by 24. Ah, that's not very big. 18 by 24. Thank you, Danny. Here, oh, oh, somebody can put 12 by 18. Uh -huh, same thing. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, so that's orange. I gotta put a little bit more, just a touch. So when you're mixing these colors, just make sure, you know, you just add a tiny bit at a time. Okay, so even right, right now I'm close to what I want, but I'm not sure if this little bit of red is going to take it over the top. So I'm going to put half of it over here, and then I'm going to just add a little bit. And then I'll see if that's what I want. And if it's not, then I can add in the orange I put, or the red that I put to the side. So this will save you, these lessons in mixing color will save you tons of paint in the future. When I was in art school, it was like, I had a professor who could not teach how to mix paint. It was so frustrating. <sighs> Wasted a lot of paint in that class. <laughs> I just added a little bit more yellow. Okay, so now I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. And mine is more like a dreamsicle orange. Okay. So I am rinsing my paintbrush off, uh, and then I'm picking up some of my newly created orange, and I'm going back in now and overlapping that color. So that's the cool thing about acrylic paint. Sometimes it's a cool thing, sometimes it's super annoying that acrylic paints dry really fast. But then we have these things called um, mediums uh, that we add to acrylic paints to slow the drying process. Or you can buy like um, golden paint, which um, they have an open brand now, which allows you to um, use your acrylic paints almost like oils. So they dry a lot slower than uh, typical acrylic paints do. So I'm using the flat edge of my number 14 to give me the straight line I need for her dress here. And so if you feel like you need to get into those small spaces, you can change to your number 12. And you can use that uh, fine tip to get into these smaller spaces. I recommend it. Because if you use your number 14 for your smaller spaces, you'll probably wind up going out of the lines a little bit. And more than anything else, this painting is about um, uh, geometric shapes and, you know, cubism. So we want to make sure we stay true to those shapes. Try not to go out of the lines. I think they have music going on next door. Okay, so I'm not 100% satisfied with the 
on the consistency of my color there, so I will probably go back over that again, but that's okay. Now, last but not least, we have um, the little girl in the kind of turquoise looking dress. And um, so we're gonna do her next. So let's, um, did we give them, what did we give them for? Oh, we, we created that color. Okay, so um, who was that? Maya, who didn't have green, you're gonna mix a little green first. So let's get that out of the way. We're gonna mix a little um, yellow with a little blue to make some green first because we're going to need green for this color we're going to mix. Okay, so we're going to make a little green. And it's going to be more um, blue than yellow. So it should be about right here in terms of your green if you don't have it. So Maya, make sure you got this color. What's that? Okay, so everybody else that already has green, Maya, we're sorry. You don't have green. Okay, so we are taking some white. We're gonna start with white. And we're gonna mix a little of our green. So I'm just gonna take a little of this green and add it to the white. So we're gonna get something, you know, we're gonna get a pastel green. To the pastel green, we're gonna add a tiny bit of phthalo blue. And we're gonna get this pale, like turquoisey kind of color that is on the last dress. Okay, now when you add that last bit of phthalo blue, you're only taking like that much. Okay, and even at that much, we're going to put it off to the side and add half of that to our pastel green mixture. And look at that, that's the color. See, if I had added that whole bit of blue, it would have been too much. Well, maybe I guess I could add that a little bit of blue. Okay, fine, I'll add a little bit. Um, I feel like I need just a little bit more of the little blue. A little bit at a time, that's how you get those colors, that's how you match them. Uh, one more time, one more time. They look blue. A little bit at a time is how we mix those colors. Hey, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna go forward with that. So I'm cleaning my brush off. Can I use this green to mix? It says it's matte acrylic. Say that again. This is matte acrylic paint. I didn't get green either. Can I use this? Um, sure. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I did. Yeah. I mean, if you feel comfortable with that color, yeah. We're just trying to make um, an oh, uh, pastel green. So it's going to be mostly white. You start with white. Add just a tiny touch of green. And then we're adding a little bit of phthalo blue till we get like this pastel blue that you see in the image. Well, it's like a little bit of green, a little bit of blue. There we 
go. So yeah, um, if someone else needs help with mixing the green that I just mixed with green and yellow, I'm happy to do that again, just let me know. I kind of feel like I nailed that, this color. That's pretty spot on. Yeah, hopefully you guys were able to nail it too. The trick is just a little bit of color at a time, starting with the less dominant color and then adding the other pigments a little bit at a time. So our number 14 brush is good for this because we have to just turn it into those narrow areas. And that gets the job done. So yeah, it looks like I'm gonna have to go back over those areas. Oops. I made a boo-boo. All right, so when I make a boo-boo like that, I just take, can you get rid of that please? I stuck my hand in me. <laughs> <laughs> when I make a boo-boo like that, I just take a, um, like a, if, if you were, if you made the boo-boo, you could use your number 14 and just go on the side like that, wet it, and just correct it like that. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up my number 14 again. And I'm going to pick up just white by itself. To get the little, little slip underneath the little dress. I'm just amazed by the simplicity of this, the whole um, idea of his painting style. You know, it's like when you're an artist and you're thinking about, oh, you know, what, what thing am I going to paint that's, you know, going to be famous the world over, and, you know, you're painting it. <laughs> and it's like, just do something really simple. Do something that makes you feel good. Although I don't know, I, I'd have to study more about him to find out, like, what he was feeling when he was doing this. I do know that he painted these all at one time, the 60. Um, paint because he wanted to make sure there was like a uniformity of color um, between each painting. So in that sense, he had a goal in wanting to create a unified body of work. But he was really lucky to have these um, really instrumental influences in his life uh, in terms of being an artist. Like, wouldn't it be great if in my little art district here there were artists that were <laughs> going to be one day famous that I'm studying under, right? I think most of the time that I spend in art is teaching other people art, so, or at least giving them the opportunity to explore art. So, okay. So I'm going to definitely have to come back and put another coat on that beautiful color because um, one coat does not do it justice. But the next step that I have in front of me is I'm going to use my number 12 brush for that. And of course, we need to wet it and then tap off the excess water and then just twirl it on the paper towel so it comes back to a point to get the excess water out and then I'm going to pick up just some white on the tip of my brush and I'm going to go in and get in my numbers. So this is how your brush should look. Can you zoom in on that a little bit please? So it should just be the tip of your brush, those last two hairs, and they are going to be your chalk. So we're just touching the tip of the brush, barely touching the canvas. 
to mimic this shape. Barely touching the canvas. Don't worry about the precision, just worry about how, how much pressure you're putting on your canvas. So we're barely touching. And that's how we're able to make those lines. And then last but not least. What was saying that? Oh, okay. Well, okay, so and then if you feel like you didn't get a more uh, precise enough line, then just go back one more time. So I'm just gonna hit the end of this. Ooh, and I forgot to tell you, which at this point, if you've already done your second code, now would be a good time to take a picture, but um, I always tell uh, students that if you can just take a photograph of your work as you're going along, you'll feel much better about it. <laughs> but this painting is just one of those that you feel good about anyway, because, hey, it's geometric and it's like you almost can't go wrong. But yes, do take, stop for a minute and take a photograph of your work so you can see how you did. So I'm going to go back one more time and, um, and put another coat of the turquoise before it dries up. <laughs> and um, yeah, let's get some turquoise. So we that color we mixed. Let's hit it again. And this time I took my number 12 brush. And you can do the same kind of uh, fine detail with your number 12. And there we have it. And don't forget to sign your work, even though it's Jacob's work. <laughs> it's also your work, so don't forget to sign it. The reason why I decided to do the Mimic the Master series is because who wouldn't want to have a painting of a uh, one of the, the masters of of art in their home, you know, and how many of us can afford it? Like, not me. And, you know, instead of buying it, then why not just paint it? Like, just try your hand at it. It's like, then it's a double experience. You get to try your, your hand at art, and then at the same time, if you do a really good job at it, then people come in your house and go, wow, where'd you get that? Well, I painted it myself. You know, so <laughs> there's always that extra added bonus of that. So, okay, who's going to come out of hiding? Is anybody, is anybody going to come out of hiding who was in hiding and let us see what they did? Because I'd love to take a group picture of everyone's work. Let's see, who do we have here? See, we still have our core six people, or 
we have two, four, six, eight, and then how many do we have? 13, we lost three. Okay. So, but that's cool. Okay, it looks like Mary Bay is still hard at work. Okay, wait, it looks like you guys are frozen. Can you still, well, okay, Diane is moving. I can see her moving. What's that? Okay. Okay, I'll give you guys a couple more minutes. I'd love to see your paintings though. Oh wait, I guess I can put one more coat of white on my little dress here. Okay, so um, it looks like either people are frozen or my blue still looks green. The art is so beautiful. My connectivity is bad, but I'll try to finish up my artwork and share it later. Awesome. Okay. Well. Oh, Diane, Diane. Oh, okay. Cool. Oh, nice. Good job on the color. Good job. Perfect. Yep, sure is. Good job. Good job. At least we can see one of them. Okay. So, yeah, I can't get a group photo because it looks like we got a couple people quite frozen in limbo. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed painting with me. You can put me back on camera. I'll say bye. Um, but I hope that you guys are unfrozen. No, oh, everybody's frozen. Diane, you're the only one who isn't frozen. That's so weird. Okay, here I am. <laughs> so I really enjoyed this tonight. I really enjoyed talking about Jacob Lawrence. I hope you guys did too. And uh, let's see, I hope you'll hashtag Studio 928 if you're on Instagram or if you're on Facebook, you can find us at, uh, at Studio 928C on Facebook. Um, you can find our website just by going to studio928.net. And um, yeah, so I forgot, yeah, Dan usually puts up all those little things at the end, so I don't have to say that, but it's good to say it anyway, sure, right? Sure, sure. So don't forget to sign your painting. And um, Mary Bay, thank you so much for uh, inviting us to be with your group tonight. And also, um, we're recording this. So for the people who did not um, get to attend tonight, we'll post the video up on um, our YouTube channel, and you'll be able to access it there as well. OK? And then you can also take a look at some of the other things that we have there in terms of uh, available paintings for you. So um, what was that? A couple thank yous. Oh, couple, this is wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, good. Good. <laughs> good, good, good. I'm glad you guys enjoyed yourselves because it's enjoyable for me too, especially learning about a new artist. So um, you guys be safe tonight. You are because you're at home, right? And um, hopefully we'll see you again sometime soon. Visit us. Don't forget the hashtag 928 or Studio 928, okay? Y'all take care. Bye. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Take care, you guys. All right.